Hey guys, hi, how are you? In 2003, I bought my first brand new car. It was a 2004 Acura TSX that turned out to be a lemon. Nearly 20 years later, I revisit the first generation TSX in the form of this 2007 Acura TSX. I bought this car from its original owner with 217,000 miles, and today I'll give you a quick introduction to my new old car. But firstly, let me tell you why I bought it. I was literally taking the train to work because my old BMW is at the shop until further notice. So I was talking to a coworker and he told me they had a car at home that he no longer drove. And he had no intention of selling it because it was his first brand new car as well. And he had it since new. So he's the, he was the original owner of this car. So after days of negotiation, he saw me how I was struggling without a car and he agreed to sell it to me. It was very cheap. And just a word of wisdom, I can tell you that a great starting point of negotiation is taking the car and putting it into CarMax. How much would CarMax give you for your car? That's a great starting point. This car needed a few repairs, maybe maintenance, but nothing that you wouldn't expect from an old car. I really don't know how long I'm going to keep it because when the BMW is ready, I'm not going to have room for two cars in my life. Let me give you a quick tour of the car and I want to hear from you. Which one should I keep? I'm sentimentally attached to the 830. It's the car that I ever kept the longest at nine years. I've driven 100,000 happy miles in it and it's been the cheapest car to own. If I were to sell that E30 today, I'd probably get all my money back, if not more. But as much as I love the E30, it is undeniable that this car is more modern. So it has airbags, traction control, anti-lock brakes, just safety features that you would expect from a modern car. I really don't know what to do. I thought I was never gonna sell the E30, but honestly, parts are getting very expensive for that car, and they're also very hard to find. Both cars have bottomed out in value, but E30 prices have skyrocketed in the last few years, and if I didn't have storage issues, we wouldn't be having this conversation. The first generation Acura TSX was first introduced in the United States in April 2003 as a 2004 year model. It became the new introductory sedan to the Acura brand in the United States. It was situated right below the TL and Acura at the time offered the RL as their flagship vehicle. The TSX was created to compete with European offerings like the BMW 3 Series, Mercedes C-Class and the Audi A4. The TSX was based in the European Honda Accord which at the time was a completely different Accord than the one offered in North America. The Acura TSX was meant to be a more sophisticated sporty sedan than the American Accord that at the time had become bloated to fit the American tasting cars. It offered a double wishbone front suspension and a multi-link suspension in the rear as well as front and rear stabilizer bars. It also came with tons of standard equipment such as electronic driver aids including vehicle stability assist, a traction control system and an anti-lock braking system. The TSX was supposed to be a fun and luxurious alternative to the dominating 3 Series at a much cheaper price tag. One of the strong selling points of the Acura TSX was the long list of standard equipment that in the case of general rivals were also available, but they came in the way of packages that were very expensive to get. The TSX came stock with mandated airbags as well as with current airbags that at the time the competition was charging extra for. The target buyer of this car back in 2003 was mostly males, 33 years of age on average, 55% were married, 85% college educated, 80,000 medium household income, and in 2003, surprisingly, I hit most of those categories. And this is the engine of the car, it's sitting sideways because this is a front wheel drive vehicle. It is an inline four, it's a 2.4. It's normally aspirated, but it is a high compression engine, which means that it requires premium gas. I was on the fence about putting premium gas in such an old car at the end of its life cycle, but the owner assured me that he used nothing but high octane gas on this and I'm just gonna do the same because I've read that you can damage the engine if you don't. Let me know in the comments if you have one of these cars and you use regular gas and the car's still running. This car may be at the end of its life cycle and I don't wanna do anything to shorten the life of this engine. Let's go over some of the features that made me fall in love with this car back in 2003. Starting with the HID lights. HID lights were not as common back in 2003, especially not as standard equipment. Yes, BMW, Mercedes and Audi offered HID lights, but you had to pay extra for them. So in the case of the TSX, it was a nice, nice feature that came stuck with it. And another thing is these fog lights were an indicator that you got the technology package, at least in the 2004 model. If you didn't get the technology package, it just wouldn't have any fog lights. I remember my car didn't have any because it did not come with that navigation system. But let me know in the comments if for 2007, the fog lights became standard equipment. One more thing to mention about this front end, I like the simplicity of it. I think that for the second generation, that's when Acura started going crazy 
with their front ends. That's when they started messing with the grill when they offered all that chrome line right here that was just too big. I think this did it for me, this five point grill. And something that I consider to be a design flaw is this bottom grill because I remember when I had my car back in 2004, maybe months into my ownership, a rock made it to the AC condenser and it had to be replaced. As far as the side profile, I'm not a big fan of front wheel drive vehicle dimensions. This car looks very good. I think that the tires were pushed as much as possible to the corners to where it looks pretty proportionate, pretty nice. These are 17 inch wheels that came stock with these cars. I think that for 2007, you could get 18s, but this is the same size wheels of my 2004. They were 215s by 50, 17 inch wheels. And I think that for this year, you might've had the option of an 18 inch wheels. Obviously this car no longer has the original brake disc. So these are slotted, not my favorite, but to tell you the truth, one of the weak points of the TSX was the brake disc because they will get uh, warped, ruffled, is that what you call it? So the car will vibrate. So the owner just recently upgraded the brakes. So they're basically brand new. And these tires have very good threads still left, but the tires are old, so they're a little bit cracked. I don't think you can see that on the video. The paint has seen better days. It's silver, so that kind of hides a little bit of the imperfections of this paint job but it definitely seen better days seems like you got keyed so this is one of those that it bothers me but i don't know if we should have it repainted because they're gonna try to match this paint and this paint is faded so the new paint i don't think it's gonna match this paint and this rear end to me this rear end is very very good looking to this day when i see tsx's on the road the original generation rear end is very good looking and then you have that dual exhaust tips they're like brushed metal they look very very good back then bmw was offering dual tips but they were in one corner so to me this rear end look looks very sporty the badging was kept to a minimum so that was pretty good as well all tsx's came with the sunroof yeah it kind of looks small for today's standards but back then, getting this and the stock version was pretty good. These wipers, I remember these wipers vividly because what I liked about them is that if you notice, the wiper on the driver's side is almost twice the size of the one on the passenger side. So that's pretty good. I need to get them because they're, they're done. And these markers that were mounted on the side mirrors, I think they look pretty good. I like how they kept the chrome to a minimum. So this car, I believe that has H very very well i do think that these tinted windows have to go because i'm not a big fan of tinted windows as it is especially in older cars because i think they age the vehicle and i don't like what they did with this visor this looks very very cheap there's signs of wear and tear the owner told me that he had to reattach this bumper himself so yes you can see it's misaligned not on this side as much as on this side there's gaps here not a big deal you notice here it's flush so the specification of these cars were very very good this car was very well put together all the gaps and all that they're very consistent and i like that but because this is old and it's been to battle then you're gonna have all these imperfections now let me give you a brief intro to the interior to start this vehicle you still have the turnkey technology in 2007 my is350 came stock with push start but this one came with turnkey and i think the second generation tsx still came with turnkey technology and as far as the instrument panel it's very very simple i love this layout notice how it revs all the way up to 7100 rpm but then again this engine has very low end torque so to get the most out of this engine you have to go into the five six and sevens to start getting the most out of it and then as you can see the speed goes all the way to 160 and i think the fastest i ever drove my original tsx might have been like 124 miles i don't recommend anybody doing it especially in this car it's sold i'm just gonna treat it like a baby because i don't wanna i don't wanna blow the engine and this navigation system let me show you real quick i'm not gonna spend too much time with it the pixels are so large the graphics are so poor this was top of the line back then 
and notice how antiquated it is by now. I, honestly, I wish this car didn't come with navigation because I do remember how my original TSX didn't have it. So it was just a regular radio with controls and stuff like that and a single CD. And this one has a CD changer, one CD here and then six more in the back. And what I don't like about this navigation, for example, is that to get to the AC controls, you have to go through a sub menu and it's very annoying. So what I do, I just put it on auto and I just don't deal with it. So here you have the AC indicators. As far as anything else, I I still like this interior honestly these are heated seats and this leather is not too soft but maybe because it's not that soft is that it has held up pretty good seems like this car was sitting in driveways under the sun throughout the years because you can see some damage like for example here where the airbag comes out you can see it's cracked already so it can only get worse from here and then the sitting position is very easy to find. This car is very comfortable. The owner of this car, the prior owner of this car was almost my same height. So I didn't have to adjust too much. You have auto windows, but it's only for the driver. Up and down. And then the other three are manual. But all the controls have held up pretty good. And then notice how it's missing this knob right here. But it's here. So all I have to do is get some crazy glue. Stick it and make it look like brand new the owner seems like he hardly used the second key so you can see this remote looks almost brand new maybe a couple of cuffs right here and then this is the valet key auto dimming mirror vanity lighting i like this car the trunk is fully lined and then it has this tray and underneath you're gonna have this spare that was never used never used that's the cd changer and then you have this release releases for the back seat and now you have extra space they could fold flat if i were to push the front seats a little bit forward so it's very very convenient the rear seats hold two adults comfortably, but they're not heated. And then you have these map pockets. So as you can see, even though it's not a new car, it offers most amenities that you can find in newer vehicles. And very, very well taken care of because the owner didn't have dogs or kids. So this area shows very, very little signs of wear and tear. I love it. When you buy an old car, you find all kinds of surprises like these dude wipes. I don't know if the owner still wants them, but they're pretty dry by now. I know that sedans don't matter anymore and Acura just don't have the following one they once had. But I know that there's people out there that still miss the old recipe of the original Acura TSX. At least I do. I, I grew up in the 80s, so in the late 80s, all those Acura products, they were so sought after. Those names, the Integra, the Legend, the Viger all those Acura products were so sought after not to mention the NSX so at, as soon as I had the funds to buy to finance my first brand new car this is the car I wanted it was it was so much cheaper than the BMW 3 Series and it offered so much more yes it's still a front wheel drive vehicle so you could never get the driving dynamics of a real wheel drive vehicle for a true sports sedan but this was very competitive back in those days so when I drove it at that car I had it for nearly three years and it was a joy to drive i loved it it was so fuel efficient speaking of which i drove this vehicle on the weekend and i went on a run trip of about 350 miles and i was able to get 31.5 miles average on this car with three adults in the car at all time and i'm not gonna lie i was trying to get the most mileage out of the car so i was not driving aggressively because i wanted to see how good it was and i'm very impressed Granted, it requires premium gas. If I'm able to get two good years out of this car, I, I'll be saving so much money because this car, being at the end of its life cycle, what do I have left? Maybe 30, 40,000 miles, and then it's gonna start breaking down. But if I get those two years, those 30,000 miles out of this car, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna save so much money over buying new, which brings me to the next topic. Me and my wife are considering letting go of the Tesla because um, it's a high payment. We knew this walking into the Tesla, of course, but there's a lot of things that we like. Uh, for example, we like traveling, we like dining out, we like going out, and I like cars. 
It's the only passion that we don't share. And as much as my wife loves the, the, the Tesla, she just told me that day that we drove in this car to Palm Springs, she told me, I don't care what I drive, but if we were to have more money to travel more, I'll be happier. So she kind of hinted that she's done with the Tesla. And that one day, I drove this car over the Tesla just because the destination was so far and I knew I had to stop a couple of times. And I just didn't want to waste those 40 minutes, those 35 minutes to charge and then do it again. And we opted for this car. And this car being so fuel efficient, you know, it's just inviting me to reconsider my next vehicle purchase for my wife because obviously she needs a reliable car because she's always driving around. So we might buy a new car, but it won't be an electric car. But definitely this car made me reconsider my, my life choices regarding vehicles because I got it for so cheap. And just to think that the, for the price of this car, I barely send maybe a payment or two on my Tesla you know where i'm going with this right so i'm not going to customize this car maybe i'm going to get a couple of things for the car i just got floor mats because these are old and worn out and i just ordered some new ones i'm not going to invest too much money on it because what's the point right it's a dying car but i want to make it look good just like my bmw some people comment on my car that it looks like it just left the showroom and that's what i want to attain with this the tesla might be seeing its last days with us and we'll see what we get. Maybe a, just a fuel efficient vehicle like a Honda Civic or something like that that gets us in the mid 30s, maybe 40 miles to the gallon. That'll be enough for us. That will fit our lifestyle because remember, we don't have where to plug our electric vehicle and having a home charger will cost us about $3,000 and that just adds to the price of the car, to the ownership expenses. Um, other than that, this is it. I think I covered everything that I wanted to cover with this car. Thank you for making it this far into the video. And remember, my channel consists of vehicle reviews. So if you have a vehicle that you would like me to review on my channel, please drop me a message on the, uh, to the email address in the description box. And I'll be glad to review your car, especially if you live in the San Diego area. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.